Hello? Hello, Terry. Hey. Hey, what's up, dude? Not much. What's up? <laughs> this is Zach Moonshine, man. You're live on the radio right now, man. All right. Awesome. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, so, Terry, man, we just got done blasting some uh, inhuman condition. We've uh, we've been playing Massacre and Death and all kinds of stuff, Six Feet Under. Tell us, man, what's going on in your world, dude? Oh, man, there's a lot. <laughs> um, you know, I got this Left to Die tour coming up in, uh, in July. That's basically uh, Rick Ross and myself. Matt Harvey and Gus Rios from Gruesome. We're doing the Leprosy album in its entirety. And we're we're going to do like five or six, uh, four or five tunes from Screamer to Gore. So it's going to be, uh, we're doing a whole tour of that. And then right after that, I got a tour with Human Condition, uh, Cataclysm and Deicide tour. We're opening for that tour. And then later in the year, I'm doing something with Obituary can't really announce it at the moment but uh there's a lot of a lot of stuff a lot of stuff happening <laughs> yeah you're a busy dude man like uh you know i was laughing i was thinking about it like uh i've had i've had the other guys from uh i've had jerem jerem uh jeremy from and uh taylor on the show and both of them are in a, a million different projects all the time ta- all yeah. the time but you are too man like all you guys <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, you know, I've uh, got a lot of irons in the fire, so to speak, so, but uh, it's cool, you know, we, we had two years of nothing, and then I'll, then it's like, you know, balls to the wall, so, uh, hey, it's a good thing. Hell yeah, hell yeah, man. So, uh, so as far as, uh, as far as left to die, man, like, is, is this just going to be a tour thing, or, or is there plans of maybe possibly putting out a record? Well, I think we're kind of approaching it as more than a tour. Um, we want to put out some music. It's just um, everyone's schedule is so crunched because, you know, Gus has, uh, he, he's got, he's in Gruesome, and he's got some other stuff in the works, and then Matt, you know, he, he's got Exhumed and Gruesome and several other bands, and so we weren't able to, at the moment, really put something together as far as new music, but we're definitely are approaching it as a band we do i feel like we do want to put out some some new music hell yeah man that would be fucking yeah. awesome dude yeah i i can only yeah like i've been telling everybody man like i can only imagine what it would sound like man fucking uh but oh well, it would it would be heavy for sure I know that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fucking yeah. that's a fucking cool lineup too man like yeah uh, yeah definitely um now, as far as so, so, in obituary, you guys just finished the tour. What was that like, man? Uh, it was great. We we did three tours uh, in a short time, basically. I mean, we did the Black Label tour, then we did the Decibel tour, and then we did this the tour that we call the Redneck Run, which is we play a lot of smaller markets up the East Coast and stuff, you know, and um, some places where people might not play. Yeah, and uh, that was that was really good. So yeah, we had three great tours, successful tours since since you know October. So that's awesome, man. Good. Yeah, I was I was watching some of those obituary uh, uh, live streams that you guys were doing. Man, that was fucking awesome, dude. The cause of yeah, death. Yeah, those, those, those were cool, and they kept us afloat during the during the whole pandemic thing, you know. And uh, that was that was cool, and we. We appreciate it to all the fans that, that purchased that and watched it. You know, thank you very much. Um, so yeah, we we also have a album that we've had recorded for a while, and uh, it's going to be coming out soon. New obituary album. Man, can't wait to hear that shit, man. Yep. Hell yeah, yeah. I could tell. I could tell watching. I mean, you guys were killing it on those streams, but I could tell, man. You guys were fucking uh, itching to get back on the stage, man, for sure. Like in front of a crowd, you know. Yeah, that's the best part about this whole thing <laughs> is playing playing in front of people. There's nothing better than seeing a crowd. You know, the energy coming off a crowd, uh, listening to you and watching you, and you know, enjoying what you do, and 
if it weren't for the fans, you know, we wouldn't even be here. So that's that's awesome that they they show up and support us. We love it. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. I've seen you. I I don't know, probably a fucking million times, fucking live with six feet under back in the day, man. Fucking uh, <laughs> hell yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> fucking uh, one of my uh, one of my favorite memories of of that was I think you guys headlined a show at Metal Devastation in Phoenix, Arizona. And it was free beer. I still got the fucking uh, the flyer that they had. It was free beer. They had kegs there, and they were just oh boy. <laughs> everybody was just, just filling up your cups, man. It's just free, oh, I'm you sure. know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. It's good times, man. Um, Definitely. Looking back on your career, though, man, like going all the way back, like with death and uh, and a massacre. Um, can you tell us, like, what? What got you started? Like, what was uh, what was some of your influences back then? Well, you know, huge influences. Were, it was more of like the actual bands, like Kiss. You know, it was a huge influence when I was young, and and when I started kind of getting into music uh, to play music, it was like I wanted to be like I wanted to be like Slayer. You know what I mean? I wanted to be like Venom. I wanted to be that kind of a band you know but then once i started playing in a band it was more like well i want to be like steve harris or i want to be like geezer butler or you know i want to be like getty lee that kind of stuff mm-hmm. but um i've always liked music like the heavier side of music i mean i'm i'm a child of the 70s you know i had an uncle that was about 10 years older than me so he turned me on to death to deep purple and leonard skinner and and Kiss and then Lizzie and all this stuff when I was young so I always had a lot of cool music around me and um you know I guess it just infected my blood and I, I wanted to be in a band too so it worked out and I've been pretty fortunate you know been in some really cool bands oh yeah man now uh uh as far as death, man, I know today is is Chuck's birthday, man. He would have been fifty five yeah. today. Um, yeah. Do you have any any kind of any funny, crazy memories or uh, stories or anything that you can share that people maybe don't know about Chuck? Uh, well, you know, we got along great, and we uh, on tour. Believe it or not, our main priority was to go record shopping. <laughs> <laughs> We, we would blow off sound checks, you know, and just go record shopping and then show up an hour before doors and the promoters would be like panicking and losing their minds. But we just, you know, we loved records, loved record shopping. And and uh, I can't think of one incident off the top of my head, but I mean, we had a, we you know, we got along great and we had a great time. And, um, you know, I have a lot of memories of those times because to me, <clears throat> that version of death I was in, I call it the blue collar version, where we were just work like and we were on the road a lot and you know paving the way for the future stuff, future bands, and you know paying our dues so to speak and uh, doing everything on our own. But uh, I have a lot of fond memories of those times, and um, you know I wouldn't trade it for nothing. Hell yeah, man! Hell yeah! I I got to ask you. Uh as far as your bass rig, man, for all the for all the gearheads out there that are wondering, and and I'm wondering myself because as I've told many people before, you're one of the reasons why I got subs in my fucking truck, man. Because <laughs> <laughs> awesome, <laughs> hell yeah, dude, that that shit fucking thumps, man. What the fuck are you using, man? How do you get those? Ta- how do you get the sounds? Well, I forever. I mean, for even back in death, I, I've been using an Ampeg SVT2 Pro head. It weighs like 100 pounds, and I always use Ampeg 810 cabinets. And um, I use a couple, you know, I have a rat pedal. I dial it in a certain way, and, um, you know, I just, uh, I hammer down on the thing, you know. I mean, I'm playing bass. It's an instrument, you know, you got to kind of, you got to get aggressive with it, you know. And uh, I enjoy it. (laughs) Fuck yeah. So, uh, so, um, Inhuman Conditions got this new record coming out, man. What can you tell us about that? Yep, uh, it's called Fear Sick. It's coming out in, uh, July. 
and um, it's, I mean, for anyone that's heard the first record, it's very much in the same vein as the first record. Um, it's got, I believe, nine songs on it. Um, we did some cover songs as well that have come out with some of the different releases around the world, you know, uh, and um, it's kind of, you know, it's the same thing, death, you know, death metal, death thrash, whatever you want to call it. It sounds like uh, a slice of the Florida death metal scene circa 89, you know what I mean? It's, uh, and that's the kind of music I love. So this music is just, it's so fun to play live. You know, you can move to it. It doesn't slow down. It's just straight up mayhem. Hell yeah. What's the what? And, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the artwork is done by uh, Dan Goldsworthy again. He did an amazing job. And uh, pre-orders are going right now. At, if you go to inhumancondition.bandcamp.com, you can do pre-order a bunch of different versions of stuff. Yeah, I I grabbed the cassette, man. Fucking awesome. <laughs> hell, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I saw I saw uh I don't know, one of you guys posted a while back about all the different cover songs. Now I can't remember um which which songs you covered on there, but I do remember that yeah. you you got Whiplash on the one that I ordered, but do you know yeah. what, what's the other songs that you guys covered? We did Whiplash. We did Pull the Plug by Death. Yeah. We did um, Executioner's Tax by Power Trip. We did uh, a song called Magnificat. It's by Benediction. It's off the Grind Bastard album, I believe. And um, we did a Faith No More song called uh, Surprise You're Dead. <laughs> nice, man. Nice. Yeah. And they turned out killer. They all sound really good. But in order to get all those different cover versions, you gotta you gotta get the different records from the different. Uh... Yeah, if you want to own a personal copy of it, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, because you know I, I forget right now off the top of my head, but like uh, Japan's gonna have, I believe Japan's gonna have Executioner's Tax. Uh, you know, Germany's gonna have some. Uh, Europe's gonna have something. South America's gonna have something. I mean, you know, so. If you're a diehard fan and you want a physical copy of all those, you got to get out there and get it. Fuck yeah, man! Hell yeah. yeah. Well, uh, uh, as far as um, like moving forward, what, what I mean, I know you got you got the tour coming up for uh, for Left to Die, and then uh, Obituary's got a new record coming out. Is there anything yeah. else you want to announce? Well, there's in human condition. We're on tour uh, August 11th through. Um, September 10th, I believe. We're opening for Cataclysm and DSI around the U.S., going into Canada, too. That's going to be great. It's going to be a Human Conditions first full-length tour. We've done a couple small little tours, you know, 10-date tours. But this is going to be our first full-length one. Uh, it's going to be great. It's a killer package. That, you know, I wish uh, everyone would come out and check it out. Uh, like I said, Left to Die. That tour starts July 7th, I believe. And goes to July 31st. It's covering basically from the Midwest over to the East. Uh, we're probably going to be able, maybe, to hit the West Coast at a later date. And then later this year, we got something coming up with obituary, uh, a tour announcement, but I can't, I can't say what it is right now. It's going to be big, and we have an album coming out. Uh, obituary, either I think it's going to be at the beginning of next year or later this year. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you about, man, one of my favorite uh, fucking bass tracks that you do is that outro thing on the end of Bringer of Blood. Do you oh, have... the um, <laughs> singing about weed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you have any... What's the story behind that, man? It, that was totally just like uh, the drummer and I were just goofing around one day before we even... We went into the studio, and we are just sitting there kind of warming up, goofing around. And we didn't think anyone was there, but somebody in the control room just pressed record. <laughs> and it just recorded us, you know, and then Chris threw some lyrics on it. And uh, that was totally just goofing around impromptu stuff right there. Improvise, you know what I mean? Just... <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I I remember when I got that CD. Uh, you know, I was I was 
smoking a bunch of weed. I was sitting in my car listening to it, and it got to the end, and it just sort of goes on. There's like a lot of long time of silence or something, and it gets up to that track, and it comes on. And I was like, what the <laughs> yeah. fuck is this? That, uh, <laughs> that's back in the day when it, people put hidden tracks on those CDs yeah. like that. So, <laughs> so we figured, hey, let's do that with that, you know, so... There's a lot of people don't know about that. That's funny. Yeah, the, the days that was the days before uh, before everything was just instantly um, streamable. Yeah. yeah. So uh, so so, uh, what's your take on on how things have all changed? You know, like like the landscape of the music uh, world now versus back then. Well, I mean, <clears throat> technology is as far as recording process and you know when I first started recording it was all on tape and you know you couldn't just stop and loop a track and cheat and do all this stuff you had to play the song you know uh, Pro Tools come in and you can like do one rhythm and they can copy and paste it everywhere <laughs> but um, I mean the music itself is just always going to just be music I mean it evolves naturally you have all these different subgenres of everything shooting off all over the place you know mm -hmm. um, that's just going to happen no matter what but um, it's the technology side that's really leaped forward you know the recording process and you know now we have cell phones we have you know back in the day you'd, you'd have a gigantic Rand McNally map trying to find a place now you can just hit Google Maps and you're right there in a heartbeat. It's so easy now. <laughs> but, um, you know, the mu like I said, the music itself is always going to be there, but it's, it's usually all the other parts that, uh, that change. You know, you got you got Kemper heads now. You got, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. <laughs> what do you... <laughs> Well, you're still using the amp peg, though. I mean, that's how that's how you're getting that sound, hey, huh? If it's not broke, don't try and fix it. So. <laughs> I, I don't blame you, man. Fuck, dude, that nope. that thing fucking sounds like fucking hell, man. Fucking, yeah. I've heard it, I've heard it front front of stage a bunch of times, man. <laughs> fucking blowing my head out. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, it's gonna it's gonna continue to blow people's heads off on this of these tours coming up. So fuck yeah, man. Hell yeah. <laughs> Any chance you guys will come to Tennessee sometime, man? Uh, I hope. Um, I have to look at the schedules. I'm not on these tour dates. We might be hitting there with these two tours coming up. I, I can't remember each date off the top of my head with the Left to Die or the uh, Inhuman Condition, you know. But hopefully, we are playing there. Hell yeah, man! I'd love to see you guys again for sure, man. We'll see you again, but I'd love to see the see the the new yeah. the new band for sure because I've never I've never seen the the Left to Die or Inhuman Condition, man. I would love yeah. to see that. Definitely, man. Yeah. All right, well, well, I guess I'm about out of questions for you, Terry. Is there anything else you want to let the people know? Uh, just thanks for their support and uh, come out and check us out and Left to Die, Inhuman Condition, Obituary. Uh, you know, and um, everybody just uh, be careful and stay safe out there in this crazy world we live in now. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, before I let you go, can I get you to make us a station tag? Sure. All right. Whenever you're ready, say something like, this is Terry from Left to Die, Obituary, Inhuman Condition, and you're listening to Metal Devastation Radio. Okay. This is Terry Butler from Inhuman Condition, Left to Die in Obituary, and you're listening to Metal Devastation Radio. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Hell yeah. Right on, man. Well, thanks a lot for taking the time All to right. talk to us, dude. Uh, no problem, man. Thank you. Really appreciate it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to blast some more uh, Inhuman Condition for these motherfuckers so they can go crazy, all right? <laughs> all right. All right, man. We'll talk Thank to you, you later. Okay. See ya. Cheers. All right, bye. There you have it, folks. Terry Butler from fucking Inhuman Condition. Massacre. Death. Obituary. Six Feet Under. All these fucking different bands, man. So many different bands, dude. Fucking badass, man. 
like I said earlier, put your speakers in your fucking windows. Put them in your front lawns. Put them in your neighbor's driveway. If you don't see U-Haul trucks everywhere tomorrow, what the fuck are you doing, man? Seriously, man. Crank this motherfucking shit up loud as 